a very warm welcome in this cold weather to all the freshers joining us for the inter orientation of Hackslash for the session 2021. Now, we'll be seeing in this orientation about what the club actually is, how we function, what all we have achieved, from where we began and to where we are achieving to go. With this, I would like to now welcome Sejil, my co-host, who will be explaining you further. Hello. Um, hello, everyone. This is Sejil Sina, the event co-coordinator at Hackslash. Before talking about our club, uh, let us first understand why do we even need a club or a community, and that too in the field of technology. Well, this can be answered into three major points. Starting from skills, getting involved in the tech community allows you to develop and grow skills that you would not otherwise find time to do. Uh, also, online communities act as a bridge between experts and learners. It associates with industry experts who share their expertise with community members through webinars and sessions. Now, next comes networking. Connecting with other developers is one of the biggest reasons why people join tech communities in the first place. When you take, uh, take time to meet, discuss, connect, and collaborate with other developers, it can lead to more career opportunities than traditional job seeking. Talking about opportunities, tech communities not only enable members to upscale your technology skills, but being a part of community, you can have high visibility among IT recruiters as well. Although the benefits of being a member of a community are not limited to this, but not all uh, clubs are able to provide you these perks. So here comes Hackslash. Formed as a college development club in NIT Patna, it was established in 2018 with only 10 members. The main reason of taking such a step, that is to form the Hackslash club, was because of the lack of awareness and opportunities for the students to achieve their maximum potential and also to bring their attention to the current need in the field of development and also open sourcing contribution. It started out as a weekly meetup in the cafeteria, but now it is a fully function club. Hackslash gives us a platform where we can work collaboratively on different projects and we can help each other grow. I know that you must have uh, now been excited to know more about us. So let's see a glimpse of some events that we have organized in the past few years. Pages. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you, Sergeant. See, talking about events, uh, when we talk about events, what do we mean when we host when we say a club is hosting an event? The events uh, are both in a manner technical events where you get to learn what is there. Even if you don't know anything about it, it is a stepping stone. It gives you a motivation to learn something new. It also gives you awareness as to what is going on in the other part of the world. And then how can you, uh, where can you get started? It can give you a direction. It can give you competition. It can give you an atmosphere where you can collaborate, work together as a team, in a, in a larger section in order to bring out changes that you think can be implemented further on. So for the first event that we'll be discussing is Hack and ITP 3.0. This was uh, one of the events that was held last year. It was basically one of the biggest ever organized hack hackathons in the Institute's history. We witnessed a huge amount of sponsors and partners, and it was a massive success with an overwhelming response of all 300 plus participants and 100 plus submissions from India and around it. Participants were challenged to imagine and implement the future to a uh, future work enabled by model technologies, as in what solutions can you present to the current problems we have? What different can you think out of the box as to the problems with that which are currently there? Basically, creative solutions to the problems we have around us it can be a very simple problem or can be a very elaborative problem ne needing an elaborative solution. So they were asked to pitch up their ideas. They were given um, uh, help through mentors uh, and judges 
in the form of and they were also given speaker sessions as to know into which direction they want to go. After that, they were also given a time uh, in, inside the mid evaluation where they were evaluated on to what they have come up till now. And then there was a final evaluation in which the entire uh, process of your journey was evaluated. What all you have uh, achieved in that duration of time was evaluated along with a lot of different criteria for it. Moving on, the next event that we're going to talk about, uh, Sejal, I hand it over to you. Yeah, thank you. So our next event is Ideathon. Uh, so Ideathon uh, was. I'm sorry. Hello. Hi. You're audible, Sejal. OK, uh, so next we had Ideathon where uh, everyone got a chance to basically showcase their ideas and compete with others. We provided them with different themes and they, and they were judged uh, based on different qualifying rounds. Also, the top performers had the opportunity to convert their ideas into reality and get funded by the Incubation Center NIT Patna. Next in the list, uh, we have Hacktober Week. Sages, over to you. Yes. See, now when we talk about Hacktober Week, uh, from the name, it is like it is very visible that it was a week long event. OK, where we were basically it was an open source. Uh, con it was basically dedicated to open source development and contribution in which we were uh, having very beginner friendly workshops like for Git, GitHub, UI, UX development, web development, machine learning, Android development, cloud computing and many other things. Um, and they were basically an introduction session as to which field do you want to go? What interests you more? It was you were given a basic knowledge into it. And then whatever you wanted to take further, you can always ask for help to the club to any member. You could reach out and you'll be given a direction. So it was basically an introduction to all the different kind of uh, diversities you can go through. Coming up the next event, Sejal, yeah. over to you. So the next event uh, we will talk about now is the study jams. This is organized. Uh, this is organized every year and uh, here we are given a glimpse of different technological domains. Basically, this is for the purpose uh, for the first years to find their interest uh, into the domain they want, uh, want to work on. And uh, last year also they had organized study jams on different technical domains like Android development, cloud computing, game development, and many more. Next, we have yeah. coordinator. Yes. See now what Codeigniter was like for the newcomers or people with no uh, knowledge of programming languages. This was basically a first screening process in a manner you can say where there were no pro like uh, language based questions or programming based questions. They were basic. There was aptitude test and then there were logic based questions as to how can you uh, solve a problem logically because as fresh as we know. See, many of us might have ideas about the uh, coding languages and how we uh, can, uh, you know, make a code out of it, run a program into it. But there are a lot of people who do not have any idea about it. OK, it is new to them. So for them, we had this where you did not require to need to learn a uh, coding language. You could just simply use your own logic because logic is something everybody has or needs to develop. So that is what basically this tested. Moving on. Yes, uh, so one of the best ways to push yourself towards your goals is by learning from the experiences of the others. So keeping this in mind, we also organized a series of interview com conversation sessions with our seniors that covered all of our doubts and uh, they shared tips about tagging placements, internships and uh, everything. So this is all about success stories. Uh, yes, see. These were a glimpse of few of the events which held which were held in the past. There are a lot many other events which were held, um, which will not be discussing it, uh, going that deep. But some of them, uh, as you can see, are Slasho Code, Tricone. It was a project. Uh, then we had Ideathon in the 19. Basically, these are series of events which are held annually for like every year. Ideathon 19, then 20, then we'll have 2021, 2022, like that. So. Uh, same is the case with hack, uh, hack and ITP and many other things. OK, uh, so after these events, we have an upcoming event, which is hack and ITP 4.0. Uh, the registrations will be starting soon and we uh, we are 
uh, encourage all of you to join this. Even if you don't have an, any idea, you'll get to know, you'll learn through this. It will be a huge learning experience. So do join it. The registrations will start soon. Yes. Uh, so next ahead, I would like to call Mohit uh, for introducing us to different members of our club. Audible? Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you, Sajid and Tijay. Good evening, everyone. I am Mohit Kumar, the PR coordinator of Axlash for this session. Now I am going to introduce you all to Axlash team. So first, a professor in charge is Mr. Kumar Abhishek, who is an who is an assistant professor of PhD department. Then we have Mr. Devi Prakash, who is the president of our club. He is in third year CSC department. Now talking about our teams, there are two categories: one non-technical and the other technical. So the non-technical team, which look after all the non-technical stuff, they are events team, PR team, and content and media team. So events team looks after with all the planning, management, execution of all the events which they discuss, all of that is taken care of by the events team. Then the PR team takes care of, deals with all the public affairs from bringing audience to our event, increasing the audience count to contacting sponsors and many more. Then content and media team, from the name only, you can guess that it is responsible for all the writing stuff that all the posts you see on our social media handles, all the WhatsApp and Discord messages, that all are written by a content and media team. Now, moving to technical teams. There are five technical teams. First team, 405 found, which is the web development team of a club. Then we have team Nogat, which is the Android and Flutter team. Then we have team Cray Interface, which is the ML department, that is machine learning. Then we have team Easter X, which is the games development field. And at last we have the team Pixel Byte, which is the UI UX designing team. Now, let me introduce you all to the core team. First of all, in easy words, if, if I tell you about the core team, it is the main body, which takes care of all the functionalities and the works which, which takes place in our club. From all, all the events and workshops or projects which we take up is first discussed and decided by the core team only and then it is carried out. So now starting with the introduction, first our president is Divya Prakash. Then we have Neeraj Patel who is a vice who is a vice president. Then Aditi Kumari uh, is a secretary of the club. Then Amrit Raj is a treasurer. Event set is Paridosh Kumar. PR head is Suraj Kumar. Then we have social media head Aishman Sharma and treasurer designee, which is Archana Kumari. Then technical head is Samriddhi Ambasta and project head is Mayam Kumar. Now coming to various departments, coordinators. First, the team Easter X coordinator is Digvijay Srivastava. Then from team Green Interface, that is the ML department, whose coordinator is Shivam Jha. Then team Nogat whose coordinators are Ayush Kautam, Rachid Suneja, Srisan Shovet, and Sanjay Tanya. Then comes the team 405 Pound, whose coordinators are Harsh Anand, Pragati Priya, Kulket Kumar, and Vikas Kumar Gohan. Then the design team Pixel Bytes, whose coordinators are Pratik Anand, Priyanshu Shekhar, and Rajma. Then comes the non-technical non departments, events coordinator, Sajal Sinha and Tejas Manhar. Then PR coordinators, that is me and Pendos Javi. And at last, con content and media coordinators are Pragati Verma and Avinash Kumar. Thank you, Mohit. Uh, now you all must be excited to know what exactly these teams do. So we will be uh, calling each one of them and you will get a glimpse of what we do and uh, uh, many more things. Yeah. So See, we've had... We've seen the overview of what Hackslash does and what all it entails, what it thinks uh, of going forward. Now, since we have seen the basic divisions inside the club, we'll go into a little bit deeper as to what different uh, departments or different portions of the club do. 
So going forward, we'll welcome uh, content and media team to please take over. Oh, hello, am I audible? Yes, Pragati, you're audible. Yeah, thank you, Tejas. So hi, everyone. My name is Pragati Varma, and uh, I am one of the content and media team coordinators at Hackslash for, Hackslash for this session. And I'll be introducing you to this team and what our work is for this club. So to be concise about this, uh, our role and responsibility in this club about, about the content and media team, what we do is that our work is just to represent the club through our words and literature before the world. Literature is something, you know, that bridges the communication gaps among the masses. We get to see this sum, this come true with each broadcast or message we circulate on behalf of the club. The content team at Hackslash is responsible for all aspects of generating contents and social media posts for the club. So what it is, whatever it is about the club, be it our achievements or our upcoming events or about our members, about our seniors, their accomplishments, whatever it is that needs to be told to the world, right? And so what, who does that, who does that work? It is us who drafts them into messages and brings it before the entire world to know. Our role is to attract developers to be a part of our events and to develop an awareness among the college community of the advancements made by us. So that concludes our responsibility in Hackslash. So the conclusion is that we are the ones who develop the communication bridge between the club and the outer world. That is all about our work, content and media team. So I would like to get back to Sezel, the host, to continue the event further. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Pragati. Uh, next in the list, we have public relations team. So I would like to call Mohit and Sadosh to take over. Thank you, Sajan, once again. So from the name only, you can understand that public relations team deals with all the public affairs. So we are basically the face and bridge of uh, the club between the all the works that take place in, within the club and the outside world. The way we communicate with others it plays a very important role in building long-term collaborations and relationships with others. So we, the PR team at Hackslash, work to achieve the same goal by captivating large number of audiences to a club's events and helping people and helping people navigate around our ideas and issues by hosting mentorship programs, talks, meetup sessions, and many more. So it joining the public relations team will help you building your personality and also in in your increase in communication skills. That's it from the public relations team. That is. Thank you, Mohit. Now let's move to something more exciting. Next, we have the team Pixel Bytes, which is the design team of Hackslash. So I would like to call the team. Thank you, event co-coordinators. Uh, this is Prateek Anand from second year EC department, and I am one of the design co-coordinators. And I will be introducing you to the team Pixel Bytes. As the team plays with pixels and eventually handles all the design work in the club, hence it has been named Pixel Bytes. Before moving forward, I would tell what actually the team does from its side. Technically speaking, the team is concerned with the design domain, whether it is graphics design, UI UX design, or motion design. As can be seen in the slide, each of the domain is further subdivided into several categories. One of the coolest things you should literally know in this pandemic situation, when each and everything is being held virtually, the work done by design team, or say Pixel Bytes team, is here is the most noticeable. Now I would like to pass the baton to one of the another. Uh, design co-coordinators, Raj. Thank you, Pratik, for handing over to me. Good evening, everyone. Myself, Raj More. I am from second year EC department and one of the design co-coordinators in Hackslash. So let's continue. Whatever project is carried out in Hackslash, Pixel Bytes actually lays the design foundation from scratch, helping the other teams to carry out with their projects. Means that, for example, if a website is to be made officially, first the design is made and finalized, and then only it is handled to the respective department. Whichever domain you take, whether it be app development, web development, promotions, or public relations, the foremost thing you need is a good design. And only a designer can tell what will, uh, what will captivate the audience, what is actually catchy for the human vision. We here ensure that the designs and 
accurately reflect the required messages and effectively express information. We develop the overall layout for posters, certificates, brochures, magazines, carousels, and many more things. One unfortunate thing you should know in NIT Patna is that there is a huge scarcity of designers. That is, the handful of designers which are present here are in great demand. So, would you like to be a designer? Please comment me in the uh, chat section. So, let's continue. You should at least have a good taste of design. And this is very necessary because uh, whatever domain you are in, the first thing that is the user interacts with your interface. And you better know that the first impression is the last impression. If he likes your in, uh, interface, then he will short short install that application or will uh, like your website. It is the same case in events because uh, the digital art speaks louder than the words. Some of the design tools we use can be seen uh, on the slide. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so these are the de design tools, including Figma, Adobe XD, Photoshop, Sketch, Adobe Illustrator, and Adobe After Effects. Figma, Adobe XD are used for uh, making uh, rough layouts as well as fair layouts, and Photoshop for editing the images, and Illustrator for working, working with ve vectors, and uh, Adobe After Effects and Audition are used for handling the audio as well as the video editing. So, uh, if you want to know more about designing, then you can uh, uh, means where to start from uh, and want to take a deep dive in graphic designing, then you can bring any of the design co-coordinators, co including me, Pratik sir, and Priyanshu sir. Uh, thank you. That's it from Pixel Bytes. Handing over to the event co-coordinator. Thank you, Team Pixel Bytes. So next in the list, we have Team Poser 5, which is the web development team of our um, club. Tejas? Uh, yes. So the web development team, over to you. Yeah, hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes you, are. you are. So hello, everyone. Myself, Har Sanand from Electronics Department. And I am also the co-coordinator of the team 405 found. So let's get started with the web development. So the very first question is why web development? Uh, so uh, team four, I would like to say team 405 found is solely responsible for all the projects in web technology. So the question arising in your mind is why web development? So for this, I would like to mention that web development is so simple to start with without having prior knowledge to any programming. You do not need any setup in order to write a code or execute it. You just have a simple open your notepad, write some code and execute it by opening you know, with some browser. So you do not need any prior setup in order to get started with. And it is very high demanding in the market. Also, whenever we have some events, hackathons and everything, the first expression and uh, the information that is provided to the participants is through the website. So web development, uh, web development uh, uh, takes uh, here the good part in events and hackathons. And web development also gives you the opportunity to express your creativity on the internet. So here is the, some of the text stacks that we used in Team 405 Found in order to make our website. So the very first and the base, very basic is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. After completing these three in the same order, we learn some of the frameworks of JavaScript in order to create our website in an easy way and provide our users the best experience. We also use some databases in order to keep our data of website. And now using these stacks, we have created some of the applications in Hexless that is visible uh, on the slide. So these are the some of the applications that we have recently completed or the ongoing that we are creating. So let me uh, tell you everything in a brief about these projects. So the very first project is Fincoin. It is a web application to provide information about stocks and cryptocurrency. It lets user to learn as well as practice in the field of cryptocurrency. You can relate it to Upstocks or grow like applications. And it was a very fantastic applic application that we are working on it. And three more of them that we have recently completed are CSS art, papers, and forms. 
so these are all the uh, projects that we have recently completed or ongoing so thank you very much and now i am handing over to the event host thank you very much thank harsh you. yeah <laughs> So moving on, let's call up what, what we have next in line as the team Nogard. Team Nogard co-coordinators, please take the stage. Hello. Yes, you audible. Continue. Okay. Thank you. Hello, hello everyone. I am Tanvi Tanya, a second year student in ECU department and coordinate co-coordinator at Team Nogard. So. Team Nogat is the Android department under Hackslash Developers Club, and we basically build mobile-based applications. The most common questions uh, question we have about Android development at this stage uh, is that should we start it this early? Uh, yes, you should definitely start it, provided you have the system requirements. Because today the Android market is growing rapidly, and it is really a very vast domain. So if you could make a user friendly app and put it on the Play Store uh, with even a few number of downloads, it, can, it could make a huge difference on your profile. Now to answer uh, why start Android development. Firstly, it has many benefits for the user and also for the business owners. Uh, it provides one touch access. It is easier to use for users. It is faster. It builds uh, loyalty relationships with the customer and also helps in enhancing the social reach of the business. So these days mobile business application, mobile application have become a necessary marketing tool for all businesses. And for developers like us, it has got much more like there are a lot of career opportunities as there are uh, very less app developers in comparison to the web developers also is one of the highest paying technology with and has detailed documentation available online. Plus, it has uh, uh, plus it comes with all the freelancing opportunities. So it is uh, really good to start it. Now, uh, talking about the classification of mobile apps, uh, it is of two types: native application and hybrid applications. Native applications are those which are built uh, only for a particular operating system only, like only for Android or only for iOS, Linux, etc. Whereas for hybrid application, there is no need to have separate code bases for uh, different uh, mobile operating systems. Both of them, uh, whether it be native or hybrid applications, have their own set of uh, disadvantages and advantages. So if developing a mobile application fascinates you, then stick around with us, stick around with Team Nogurt and you would get much more to learn with us. Uh, now I have my fellow coordinators uh, who would be showing you the projects on which we have worked over the past years. Uh, Rachit will continue forward. Uh, over to you, Rachit. Oh, thanks, Sanvi. Hello, everyone. Myself Rachit Suneja and I am the co-coordinator of Team Nogurt at Hexless. So the project name is Messi and Messi Admin. Basically, both apps work together in coordination. The first app that is messy is for students, and the second app that is messy is for admins and the mess members. And both apps have different login sign up pages. And one of the main features in the app is chat feature, in which the student admins and mess members can chat with each other. And in this, we have to use real time database, which is a feature of Firebase. And Firebase is a database in case you don't know. And other feature includes assembly list, in which mess member will keep a track of students who are absent that they mess. And other features include creating a notice, in which the admin or mess member can create a notice for students. So messy admin and the students can create in messy. And there is also a feature for students for reporting an issue, and this issue will be displayed in the complaint box in the messy admin. And you can see that in the screenshot mentioned here. And many more, many more features just like are available in the apps. So I think it's my be clear now. So I use over to you. Thank you, Rachit. Hello, everyone. My name is Ayush Gautam, second digital student in CSC department and one of the coordinator of Team Nogat. So talking to our project Hazri, as the name suggests, Hazri means attendance. So this is basically our attendance taking app and it take attendance in a physical classroom. And for that, you need a sign in for that. You need a sign in and after sign in you, you need a valid team ID and 
for that there is a various option uh, for the class and there is a option for attendees and a host for the attendees you need a uh, team and after you are uh, entering that team your attendance will automatically to send to the uh, host and for the host you need a you need to create a team and in that there is a list of attendee and this app is used in a physical classroom so and within the five minute all the attendance were taken and this app is also uh, uses real time database the name of the the name and all the detail of the student were directly saved to the database so that's all from uh, project hazri and now i i would like to invite uh, srijan for explain their project srijan over to you thank you ayush just confirm if i'm audible or not yes you are audible srijan okay so good evening everyone i am srijan shovit second year ec student and i am one of the co coordinators of team nogat especially in charge of the flutter team so you must be wondering what actually flutter is so it's basically another way or approach of developing apps so as tanvi told there are two approaches native and cross platform or a hybrid app development so flutter is a ui development toolkit provided by google for developing cross platform app which basically means that you can you have to write code only once and that will be compiled for different platforms like ios android and with some modifications you can compile it for linux as well mac as well and etc so it helps in compiling your code into different platforms with one code base only moreover it provides different ui elements of the app like app bar bottom navigation bar drawer so it basically helps any newbie to get into the field of android development very easily and the development time of this using flutter is also very fa fast so some of the projects which we have done are here so first is the hostel app which is a hostel management app which has two parts first for the student and one for the admin both have different login and sign up so suppose a student who is staying in hostel has some kind of complaint regarding anything in hostel so what they can do they can give their information write the explanation of the complaint take the picture and submit it and that will be directly visible to the admin people so they can see the complaints and take action on that and also mark them sorted or pending also there is a strict monitoring of exit entry records of students so basically whenever you will be exiting from your hostel or entering into your hostel you have to fill a form and that will be maintained and directly visible to the admin and you cannot fool this app it will basically check your location as well as time so if you try to fool this app it will give an alert with your information to the admin and all this data is maintained using a real time database that is firebase um, please change the slide yeah so the second app which we are working currently is a is alerta a weather alerta it will basically show the general information about weather like um, wind speed temperature and all and uh, hourly forecast and daily forecast but in case there is some approaching disaster like a cyclone or hurricane which will be approaching in 7 days or 10 days so it will give an alert to the user that such kind of natural disaster is approaching with all the information and we are also thinking to extend features like a ways of rescue like what what the government is doing for helping the people to vacate that area and provide some safe shelter so we you we would be informing the user with those ways of rescue and features like location selection and google seeing the disaster distance from my distance on google maps or would be some would be some cool features of this app so yeah that's all from team nogat and thanks everyone and uh, over to you the event host thank you shrijan yes it was a wonderful uh, uh, presentation by team nogat thank you moving on we'll be calling our uh, ml team the team gray interface over to you yeah so good evening all i'm audible sir yeah okay so first of all everyone uh, please okay am i visible or not uh, no you're not uh, no you're not now you, no, you are now you are, you are visible right so uh, first of all everyone please give a friendly hi to this friendly looking robot here on our screen right so uh, now on this note let's first begin the understanding of what ml actually is so when i say a friendly robot right 
so robot is basically what it's not a human it's a machine it's a a combination of ic's and semiconductors and circuits and everything right right but what goes into making this robot a friendly robot hmm? so that is what you call artificial intelligence so basically here at team gray interface we uh, we we wonder we ponder upon three of the main concepts here as explained first of all how is a machine deemed to be artificially intelligent agent right or uh, second point what equations or what codes does that does go into making a, a machine a mere set of computer uh, intelligent because ml is all about uh, equations so uh, the the very essence of uh, learning ml is when you find out that sentiments or uh, feelings are nothing more than just mathematical equations literally and uh, uh, again uh, it's it's not to be it's not a matter to be afraid when you when you hear the word math because uh, because you know we are engineers right we can learn anything <laughs> we, we want so uh, yeah now the third point how can you begin your journey into the ever widening domain of ai so this artificial intelligence domain is undoubtedly uh, the domain most sought after right uh, the highest paying jobs of uh, like data scientist or ml engineer uh you know us usa has a kind of 170000 dollars per year average salary for a data scientist so again data science is a part of ml it's uh, basically you know uh, finding out how your data uh, how your real world data behaves to changes uh, to stimuli and then uh, shifting it into ml models and creating whole lot of interesting stuff out of it visualizations predictions and what not right so uh, now for the next slide so this is uh, our projects that have been finished yet in our team grant phase the first one you can see here on the screen is project moderator bot so what this moderator bot was uh, it's like a sentiment analysis bot so what it does is uh, let's suppose uh, it's it's uh, you know you, uh, you you guys might be familiar with discord discord is basically a chat platform uh, where people uh, come into groups and chat so this bot is uh, like a filter screen okay uh, it it filters all the messages that are going through that channel Okay, Anshu says which language you prefer for ML. We'll get back to you, Anshu. Uh, hold up your question for Q&A session, right? So, uh, this NLP, what it does is it analyzes the sentiment of a message that was sent by a user. Let's suppose a user uh, abused or a user uh, used foul words. So, what this model will do, what this bot will do, actually, it will warn him that okay, you are uh, you have been warned for obscene. Uh, you have been warned for threats. Uh, let's suppose I say I'll kill you. Uh, let's suppose I'll kill you. Uh, X Y Z. so it will warn me like shivam jha you have been warned for threat okay and after five warnings it will kick me out of the server so this was our first project moderator bot it's a discord bot uh, this convolutional 1d and lstms are basically you know uh, high level terms for short level things uh, you'll get to learn it and the second one was sign language detection web app so what this does is you might have probably heard about computer vision so what computer vision is computer vision means uh, whatever the computer sees on the screen whatever camera frames it's being captured so uh, you uh, your model will try to generate some meaning out of those images it will learn from the images what the image exactly is uh, or uh, what what uh, features lie in the image like suppose this app of mine what it does is let's suppose i put here like 5 so it says me i see 5 uh, let's suppose i uh, point like this so it says 7 so this app was basically developed to facilitate people who are dumb and uh, you know uh, uh, who who can't uh, speak out who speak in sign languages so basically what you do is you uh, put on your phone point your camera towards the person who is dumb and uh, blow and behold uh, see the magic it, it shows you uh, the the sign the uh, transcription of the sign that's being generated right okay now moving on to our ongoing projects so our first ongoing project is sketcher what sketcher is again i'll read the high level <laughs> technical terms for you an attention or deep convolution gan stitched with an lstm to synthesize human faces from textual description possibly helpful for police to sketch out criminals uh, you might have uh, watched that cid serial i don't know so what what they what they do is uh, they say that okay so how was the criminal like and they'll describe the criminal so he had big mustache he was bald or he had red hairs and the people there they will uh, you know quickly sketch out their criminals and it was like aisa dikhta tha so that is basically what my sketcher is trying to do so okay so our our uh, sketcher gan is it's an ml model 
you will feed in textual description of the criminal uh, like you will say uh, a, a latin woman with uh, hazelnut colored eyes so it will generate the face of a woman uh, with all the sorts of description that you have provided latin in nature uh, let's suppose blonde so uh, blonde colored hairs and uh, eyes uh, iris color will be hazelnut okay so this is the sketcher thing so we are planning to release a sketcher as a bundled package full bundled software uh, possibly on uh, you know uh, github packages or a docker image so uh, to be used by everyone like so now uh, the second project which is going on is a image classification project so what this image classification project basically does is so uh, there is this uh, uh, you know you probably have heard about uh, large uh, observatories large telescope or radio uh, observatories present there what they do is they capture the deep space radio signals right they capture the deep space radio signals and they try to uh, they try to extract data from those radio signals that from which planet it is coming from how far it is coming right so this model what it does is the model is trained on those radio signals we have the data for that radio signals so you'll uh, just simply open the website input your radio signal data and it will return you uh, this uh, it will display on your screen that model will be working on the uh, you know behind backstage it will return you on your website that what kind of signal it is from how far it's coming what's the depth of the probe so all these things we are trying to improvise on so yeah that was about the uh, theme grain interface and how to start your journey uh, which language to use all sorts of stuff will be coming with uh, in, in front of you all with our uh, uh, training uh, our uh, study jams as uh, told by our uh, wonderful event hosts here my dear friends so yeah that's about it thank you uh, back to you sesal teachers thank you shivam uh, moving on it was a wonderful presentation now we have uh, team easter eggs our game development department over to you Thank you, Tejas. Just a minute. I hope my screen is visible. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Ah, uh, yes, sir. It is. Cool. So, good evening, everyone. I am Dikvijay Shivastha, currently in CSC third year. and i'm the coordinator of team easter eggs which is the game development team under hackslash so today i'll be introducing you to the game team how it functions and everything related to game team so what is game dev after all simply speaking game development is the overall process of creating a video game but uh, let me define it in a different way create your own real create your own world and your own reality so exciting right that's what that's exactly what game development lets you do how would you feel if you could change your reality and create a whole new one a new reality which is maybe based on based in space with asteroids attacking a spaceship or maybe a reality based in the ocean where you try to fight pirates well creating a new reality um, is not possible in the real world but it is definitely possible in the world of game development so game dev is a unique stream why is it so if you thought that making a video game is as easy as playing one well that's a myth it includes dealing with a multitude of systems like rendering engines cinematics game loop physics simulation visual effects and all that cool stuff simultaneously so a very large scope for you by joining game development you would get to realize that there is a very large scope for exploring your creative side and building something that well depicts your thought and engages users and the popularity of game development is only increasing and it is quite big in the sense of metaverse well you all must have heard of many big mnc's working in metaverse now coming on to the next point joining us would get access to different resources required to start your game dev journey experience of working in a fast paced team and get familiar with rapid development so it doesn't limit over here we have optimization tuning of controls graphics and much more in game development 
so that's the very reason you can say that it's hard fun now let's take a look at some of our projects so this is our first project neon night tower rush it was our first game that was published on play store it's basically a 2.5d endless in a game where you have to make your way through the falling meteors and shooting turrets before hot lava gulps you down so basically you have to escape from the lava by going upwards and escaping the obstacles that are coming to you and it it is it has been already published on the play store so like you can straight away go on go on to the play store and download it and play it now moving on to the next game we have a driving simulator so this is basically a simulator we have where we are trying to leverage unity's physics engine to implement all the functionalities of a vehicle to provide an immersive simulation of driving so uh, i just used the term unity unity is basically a game engine which lets you combine various aspects of a game like you have audio you have effects you have rendering engines you have you have a lot of things so in order to combine those things you use a game engine so unity is a game engine and we are using currently we use unity to develop all the games like all the games that we have developed right now have been developed using unity so this game hasn't been published right now and it is under development and i would like to show you other projects with the help of a video so let's move on to the next slide uh anyone can anybody confirm if you can hear the audio as well yes sir yes, sir. okay cool okay cool Yeah, so that was all from Team Easter X. I hope it got you excited. Thank you. Over to you, Tejas Sejal. Thank you, uh, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> it was really fun to watch, and I really hope everyone is uh, actually very excited, and we can see that in the chat also. Uh, okay. Let me share once again. yeah we'll share the screen back in the meantime uh further on we'll be discussing the frequently answered questions frequently asked questions basically any doubts like which can occur in your mind or which we had occurred in our mind previously and we've mixed them together collaborate compile them and we have an faq session now which uh, pulkit you can take over yeah and You don't need to worry. Your uh, separate questions will also be answered to, towards the end. But for now, we'll get just take over. So hello everyone. Uh, I'm Pudit Kumar Agarwal. So now I'm going to take 
ethical uh, system. So the first question which comes to our mind is where to start from. So uh, for starting our technical journey, there are various ways, but uh, I'll keep it to two stepwise. So it will like first uh, any first uh, learn any programming language, like any basic programming language, so that you can have some basic knowledge of what programming language is and what you can do with this programming language. And after this, uh, you will have a sort of maturity to understand the logic uh, which you can build through that uh, using that programming language. And now you can choose a domain of your choice. And there's some uh, popular choices are like web development or Android or cloud or machine learning or AI. So try to gather some uh, ground information of each so that you will be able to uh, make a healthy choice that uh, which domain is suitable for you and uh, yeah, like uh, which domain is best for you. So after choosing the domain, uh, first start with some basic uh, basics of that domain. Learn by making some uh, real life projects. Uh, after reaching the certain level, uh, you can add the achievements to that project. Yeah, uh, and remember your passion and, and patience towards uh, learning and solving the problem is much more fruitful, uh, fruitful for the outcomes. And so the our next question is which programming language to choose. So um, if you are newbie to coding, then just start with the C language, uh, which will be taught in your first year itself. Uh, make some strong grip, uh, grip on basics so that uh, whenever in the future, you will be heading towards the new domains, let's say uh, in web development, you just have to revisit the same concepts uh, in the JavaScript. Uh, that will be uh, like a cake walk for you. So moving on to our next question. Yeah, so uh, yeah. what is more important, learning multiple languages or uh, great grasp of just one or two languages? So uh, learning multiple languages is not a great thing. However, you should try, uh, you should have the ability to learn some new languages as per the requirement. You should be able to understand the basic functionalities of code written in other languages. Also, uh, even during your placements, uh, companies require you to grasp in just one or two uh, general programming languages like C, C++, Java, Python, or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, they also want you to have the ability to learn other programming languages as per their needs. Uh, yeah. So our next question is: Which domain should I choose for uh, department uh, departmental part? Like, uh, sorry, uh, for development part. Uh, which is web development, mobile development, etc. So, if there is any confusion in choosing the right, best uh, suited uh, field for you, then you can start exploring every field because uh, you are in just uh, first year, so you have a lot of time to explore all the things. So, keep exploring, uh, keep learning. Uh, yeah. For so, move on, on to the next question. So what is prerequisite for any domain? So there is just prerequisite, uh, prerequisite for hacking in any domain. That is your interest, your passion to solve uh, problems uh, by the use of technology and also to explore new technologies. Uh, here you will be transferring your ideas to solutions by use of technology that can that can solve uh, various problems easily. However, in the beginning stage, you would be provided the course material and uh, courses study material and proper guidance to get you started for a particular domain and finally work on projects in the domain. Okay. So the next question is, do development and competitive coding have to go side by side? So it might sometimes seem that uh, one has an upper edge, but both are equally important to excel in the placement interviews. It's not like uh, competitive coding is more important or development part is more important. Like being in a development, uh, it, uh, being in developments to help you to associate yourself with many challenging projects and uh, working with a large community, uh, which would be uh, much, which would be like uh, further help you to skill up yourself. You know, uh, there is a big community, a uh, big open source community, which we, uh, which you can work with. Okay, so next question is so. Okay. Next question is in what way running hex class will help me? So uh, here in Hexless, you would mainly learn how uh, how would you actually work in a team to achieve your goals by completing projects before deadlines. You will uh, 
yeah you will learn to work in the pressure uh, like we want give you pressure but uh, you will learn how to work uh, like how to complete the projects in the deadline and you will uh, you will be also given opportunities to completing in the events and there are many more things uh, in which help uh, joining the xlash will help you your uh, developments may also get showcased to our society uh, like your development projects and so that you can get a proper recognition you would also be uh, able to join various ex- exclusive events webinar sessions etc that will have in store for you uh, to help you school yeah. thank you thank you pulkit um uh, yeah so moving on uh if you want to be a part of hack slash it is very important for each one of you to follow the community guidelines so do not forget uh, to give this a read uh, because violating these uh, guidelines can result to an action by the community so please go through these guidelines once uh and finally do not forget to join us on discord if you have not already uh, all other social media handles are for the sole purpose of important announcements but for interaction or asking any queries or for any discussions or help you need to join discord also uh, most of the club activities take place in discord so do join that tejas uh, yeah see uh, rightly told by sejal uh, most of the activities are done on discord so basically if you want to interact with the club and got need to know the ideas how to do the things how not to do the things everything is on discord but other than that if you need uh, reminders about uh, certain events or things happening a uh, workshops happening those all of that you will get on also get on these the uh, social media handles and for any session that has been recording it will also be uploaded uh, to the youtube channel which is the hackslash developers club um for any important mails which need to be given to e- each and every individual will be uh, given through your mail uh, through this mail id so if you want you can uh, mark this as a star or you know make sure that you do not have any uh, emails through this uh, particular id into your junk folder make sure of that and for other things do follow these channels because uh, all of the updates all of the reminders all of the things which are happening which are open to everybody to join uh, will be posted out and will be uh, broadcasted through these social media handles moving on yeah uh, before uh, uh before we end the session now uh, since we have answered all your uh, like the faq questions which were the frequently asked questions now we can take up any queries that you might have which may not have been answered till now uh, you can write them in the chat box also and we can select uh, different queries and it will be answered by the team here or you can also raise your hands and you'll be unmuted one by one to ask your uh, queries Uh, it can be a very simple query also and a t- complex one if you have one so like even this if you think it is a silly, silliest queries you can still ask it is open to all just ask yes we have two raised hands here yeah okay first is a uh, uh, susajit kumar singh are you here with us oh um he's uh. not able to Okay, we'll move to the next one. Probably uh, he'll raise his hand uh, again. No, no. Uh, maybe uh, it is not hard. No, I'm allowing the mics to the ones who raise their hand. Irfa okay. Ali, you've been given the access to the mic. You can ask your questions. Ifra. Uh, Abhinandan, you can also ask your questions if you have any while we wait for Ifra. Good mo uh, good evening ma'am good evening, good evening. sir Ma'am I wanted to ask that what should be the uh, first programming language according to you that we should learn like if we start from a, a monotonous or a, a language that is difficult to understand that we won't be able to develop our interest because this is the first time we are doing this so what should be the first language ma'am Sure uh, is there anyone from the team who would like to take up this question as to the which should be the first uh, i think we have already answered this 
uh, earlier on but for as far as that, that is concerned uh, it, in the earlier answers it was said that you can start with c because that is the basic language and it will be uh, the uh, it's upgrades like c sharp and c plus plus they'll be used multiple ways so the basic thing while you're learning of your first language is to get the concepts clear as to what pointers are because see pointers is one thing but it'll be there in everything the other thing is uh, different kind of uh, uh, processes like threading and uh, synchronization and all that so the processes need to be clear the lang when you change from one language to another it's just does a syntax that is changing and the few constraints are the changing so just start with one language after that make sure your concepts are clear okay so okay ma'am Okay. Hello. Yes. Good evening, ma'am. Hanji. Good evening. Uh, and I have set up some questions. First of all, tell me what to study. In what sequence we have to study, and what are the sources, the best sources to study? Please uh, entertain all these three questions one by one. Okay. Hello. Yeah. So yeah, we'll yeah. be taking up this question. Uh, whether you're talking about uh, academics or are you talking about some specific field like? Uh, I am talking about all this uh, codings and all uh, and what are things to study to be a good developer or good at all the things about uh, okay. in which a uh, hex slash uh, entertain or uh, what about the hex slash contains. I feel for the resources you don't have to wonder here and there. Uh, what matters the most is to stick to one particular resource that you find good from the beginning to the end. That would do most of uh, the thing. And um, apart from that. Uh, I think you should first start with exploring. You cannot just study everything that is here, like Android and game. And you should first explore yourself. What interests you the most? You should go into different domains and try them out. Whatever you feel uh, is most suit uh, suitable for you, you can go and uh, explore more about it, or you know, you can learn more about it. Uh, at this stage of time, I am fascinated about all the things which you are talking about uh, because I was. Uh, interested in game developing also and also one more, more at a point of time ai yeah, this fascinates is, uh, me most ai so i love ai and machine learning like things so okay i am so thinking good. to achieve as many as i can in this duration of four years that's why i'm asking what are the things to study and in what sequence and what will be the best source to study from which youtube channel which book uh, and what website or what content See the most reliable way to study. You can uh, see you can study concepts through videos if you want. But if you want uh, something that like uh, we need, which you need to look back again and again at while you're making projects, then it it is best to go for a documentation and go through the uh, specific parts when you're using it. As to if you're making something and you need a specific thing, you need see you can't remember everything. You can remember the concepts. When you go going through one particular thing, you can uh, use its documentation and go through it for uh, learning the concept through YouTube channels, uh, whichever suits you best, whichever helps you understand uh, easily. That is, uh, you can go with that. And as far as you you were having uh, interest in a lot of different things, so see, uh, first of all, having a lot of uh, interest in a lot of different things is not bad. But what you need to do is you need to make sure that. Uh, just because having multiple interests, uh, it is not happening that you are not able to uh, give your time or uh, your efforts to one particular thing. Also, just make sure yes, your time is true. divided and you are using it uh, nicely. As far as the uh, different uh, department specific or uh, uh, you want that, I think the department uh, coordinators can answer. Which for particular department you should need to learn as a basic. Uh, actually, I'm not uh, talking about the basics. Uh, just now, server presenting no. some uh, apps, developing and all. So, to uh, make all these apps and all the apps. Well, uh, Susajit, so actually, everything starts from basic, right? Um, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. One thing, Shiva, maybe there is a question. Just hold something. on for a second. Uh, we have our uh, president over here, Div uh, Prakash sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Hello. Before moving yes, forward, uh, I'd uh, like to mention two of the names which I am saying in chat. Uh, and Sajal or Tejas, just unmute them. Uh, a specific uh, the people are Lisa Case, Vasnavi, and Kusraj. Sure, sure. Uh, if you could then please raise your hands, Rishi Case, Vasnavi, uh, and Kusraj. I'm allowing Rishi Case, Vasnavi. Who was the second one? Kusraj. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, provided to Kush also. Right. Okay. So both of you, oh, what do you think? What this community is, and especially why are you here? And I'm not uh, asking that what do you think. I'm just asking why are you here? Say so this is your first time, and also. You might have orientation of uh, different clubs or communities uh, because there are three to four communities who have already taken their orientation and something like that. Uh, just make sure that if you are doing any kind of in, uh, uh, disciplinary actions or doing any kind of thing uh, that is uh, not good, uh, I will be removing uh, you all and transferring uh, all of your details to the concerned department. And this club actually comes under CC department, but uh, it has people of all the departments. So before uh, doing any kind of uh, stuff like that, uh, just make sure that where are you? All right. Uh, so uh, for now, uh, So if you uh, both have anything to say, you can, or after uh, this incident, uh, I think uh, you must not repeat uh, any kind of actions. All right, apart from uh, that, uh, I would like to take uh, three to four questions uh, from now on. If you have uh, anything, you can ask other people. Hello. I think so, sir. Uh, yes. So I'm audible. Yes, you are audible. Yeah, I want to ask a question that I just completed C++ and now I just started DSA, okay? And I just, I means I just solved something like 80, 70 to 80 problems of C++, okay? Mm -hmm. So should I start uh, doing problem code forces or courses or uh, just continue the preparation of DSA? See, uh, it totally depends upon you what you want to uh, do, but the most basic part uh, is that uh, you must complete at least uh, five star on hacker rank, uh, which I suggest. But mm -hmm. you can uh, directly go to code forces if you are uh, confident enough. For example, I solved some problems on hacker rank, like uh, means uh, on ten questions say, something let like. Let me uh, give you an example. Uh, a student okay. uh, in uh, an triple IIT who is will be passing out in 2024 joined uh, that college uh, i think that is triple it bangalore and he is in my connection on linkedin so that person has started uh, doing cp in his first year and in uh, the very first eight months uh, he got the uh, rank of uh, which you call a very good rank uh, that is candidate master so if you are passionate enough and you are uh, willing to uh, devote the time they are uh, not nothing. at good as good as that means I am not a good problem solver for now. Say uh, that uh, kid who has achieved that uh, milestone in eight months is also uh, not uh, someone who was doing coding from his 10th or 12th. You all have just uh, joined uh, a technical college. Before that, uh, I don't think so that uh, many of the people have uh, an idea what uh, CP or uh, languages. Most of the people actually uh, read uh, C or C++ and they have the knowledge about that one and regarding web development, HTML, CSS, all of you know. But apart from that, there are many things uh, that you learn uh, specifically after coming to college. For example, uh, for now, most of you just some are uh, mentioning about ICPC. Yes, uh, that means I continue the preparation of BSA. Yeah. Uh, DSA is nothing uh, that uh, you need to prepare. There is nothing uh, like that you need no, to prepare just... for uh, DSA. DSA is no, prepare the no, no, means I... essential thing that a person must have before uh, its third year. Yes, because in third year you will be having your internship uh, interviews and everything. Okay, it means without DSA I can solve problem and code separate code courses. No, you telling me. I am not saying uh, that you will uh, be able. How can you solve uh, any problem on code forces or any other platform if you are, uh, do not know DSA? DSA means data structure. Data structure means that 
how you arrange the data, it defines that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. Hello. Yes, yes sir. Audible. Oh, Am I? Uh, okay. So I had a query that whenever I ask someone that I have been preparing for this language or C plus plus language, uh, they say that uh, the best way to prepare it like doing projects about the language. So like, what is the basic idea of projects? Like, are they like if I am studying inheritance for say? So the project must include all the uh, levels of inheritance or all the concepts of C++. Well, uh, Jaspal, I would like to take up your doubt. <coughs> See, the thing is, uh, when you talk specifically about inheritance, so uh, okay, so tell me, how do you define? Uh, okay, so what what criteria does this inheritance particular word comes under? So like uh, uh, the it's uh, like an oops concept. Like I am st I'm studying C++ from a book, say. So I have been going from chapters to chapters. Like I'll first study the functions, then classes, yeah. then inheritance. Right, so right, when right. I it's like yeah. people say that you have to do projects about the language. Yeah, I so got what you. project. Just fine. Just fine. I got you. Wait. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, you are very correct. Inheritance is basically object-oriented programming design, right? Yes. Now uh, to tell you this oops isn't something which you uh, can implement directly a project with, right? Yes, sir. Oops is a concept to be implemented in software engineering designs. Yes, sir. Right? Because oops, what it does is oops provide a sense of security and a sense of uh, uh, you know uh, independency to your software. Yes, so sir. oops is a concept which is to be included in your software, be it in any field, let's say web development or let's say ML, right? Or let's say uh, you know uh, blockchain. So that is uh, where oops come under uh, the uh, you know in, in the play. So you can't just say that you can uh, you can practice projects related to inheritance. No, you need to take up a track, uh, you know, a tech stack. So there is a difference between a tech stack and a, a, a software engineering uh, architecture. Right, tech stack is let's suppose web development, tech stack is blockchain, right? Tech stack is uh, Android uh, development, tech stack is ML. So this tech stacks you need to learn and you can then implement your object oriented concepts in a tech stack. Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, first and foremost, I would suggest you is that uh, learn the language, learn the object oriented concepts well and good, but for the implementation of object oriented concepts, you need to learn a tech stack, right? You need to uh, get familiar to a domain. You need to uh, you need to uh, learn something which which you can uh, build a real project with. Object oriented is nothing you can build a real project with. So, it's, it's so that's so, what so, my query is. Like when you say that you have to build a real project, what does it like? Uh, what does it comp uh, comprise it with it? Like a project? What? kind of project uh, thing is a project uh, well uh, i suppose uh, we have a, we have just given you a whole lot of awesome examples in our slides so, sir, uh, in that case for say for. let's say i am uh, studying about a concept in c++ yep so if uh, someone says that you have to build a project about it so does that project mean uh, all the concepts of c++ or basically that only concept only that concept uh, okay well jaspal uh, what i'll say you is if anyone says you that you need to build a project of uh, inheritance or you, uh, you need to build a project of object oriented programming in c++ mm -hmm. so uh, that person uh, you know nothing to be taken as an offense but that person might be wrong because yes, object oriented is nothing you can build a project about. I'm saying you again and again. Object oriented yes, is something that can be used while building a project. Yes, sir. That's what that I was thinking. Those two points. So that I'm, uh, yeah. the way I've been practicing is like I'll be studying all the concepts related to like basic concepts of C++ language and for uh, solving some of the, their logical questions. And at the end, when I feel like I'm at par with all the concepts, I'll like work on basic projects and on the like apps like or the GitHub or the hacker ranks and all that stuff. That's what I have my criteria of learning a language comes under. So uh, first of all, well, hacker rank doesn't uh, allow you to build apps, right? N not sir, apps like uh, the questions or like uh, the queries they have been putting up. See, uh, when when you say the questions on hacker rank, those questions don't qualify as projects. OK, sir. Those are the questions which are there for you to practice what object oriented programming is, but those are not projects. Again, project yes, is a software which addresses a particular problem, right? You know, which has a user interface, which has a uh, user interaction, UI, UX, 
there are several sure. criteria that define a project so problems or hacker rank related to inheritance or yes, related to dynamic polymorphism they do not qualify as projects okay sir i got the idea thank you so much sir okay so any more queries uh, we can't see any raise hands so if you have any query or uh, raise a hand uh, the queries in the chat i think they're already being replied to in the chat itself any more queries you can raise your hands okay if not uh, thank you all for joining uh, now we'll be having a group photograph so we'll uh, ask all of you to just switch on your cameras before before we end the session for hack slash just because after this we'll be having a gdsc and it patna they'll be taking over so before they take over uh, let's have a group photograph Okay, Sajid, can you uh, remove the slides, please? Um, I don't have the control. Wait oh. a second. I guess Paritosh sir has the control. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I just stopped it, sort of. Yeah. Okay. So all of you can just switch on your cameras. We'll be taking a group photograph. We'll see all of your lovely faces. <laughs> yeah. So all of you can switch on your cameras. Uh, first year, second year's uh, team, all of you can. We'll have a group photograph and then we'll uh, hand it over to GDSC and IT Patna. So just open up your cameras. They don't have the access to camera. Yeah. Uh, uh, it it is being enabled now. Yeah. Camera is disabled still. No, now it's, it's enabled. Just a moment. Let me see if I can. Yeah. I think in the meeting settings, just enable them for all. Uh, while everybody is just switching on their cameras, if you have anything to share, uh, they, any experience or probably something you'd like to share, you can share a feedback an experience, something like that. By the time everybody's switching on their cameras, you can go one by one. It was a good experience to, uh, to meeting all the hack slash members, and we will come to know about a lot of things which earlier we were not aware of. So, and it gives us a good motivation about what can be done and a lot of other ideas of other fields like gaming and what can be other things that are done in our colleges. So, it's a good session and it's motivated to us. Thank you. Sure, delighted to have you two here. Okay, so if there are no more cameras switching on anymore, uh, let's take a group photograph. Uh, well, uh, yeah, but it's already enabled. I checked. Yeah, so let's take a group photograph. Stay still for three seconds. After that, I'll take the photograph. So it's not hazy for anybody. Okay, just try staying still for a few seconds so that, yeah. We'll be taking in the uh, photograph in two shots, okay? Twice. So here we go for the first time. Stay still, everybody, okay? One, two, three. Yeah, we've taken for the first time. You can take a little break. I'll take it again in a second. Okay, yeah, S still again for the second time. Now is it the screenshot or the together mode? Uh, it is a uh, screenshot in together mode. So we have okay. all the faces together. Yes, ma'am. Okay, ready?
Okay, can I uh, see? I think your mics are also enabled now. So can I get a uh, ready? Like, can I hear a cheer that yes, we are ready for the photograph? Not ready. Ready? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Ready. Ready, ma'am. Ready, ma'am. Okay, stay still then. Because some of you are having uh, internet issues. Your photos are getting a little bit blurred. Stay still. Okay. Last photograph. Like, make sure you have light on your face so that your face is visible. One, two, and three. Yes. So now we'll be wrapping up the session for uh, hack slash orientation for today. And now uh, we'll be handing it over to GDSC and IT partner. We'll start in a few minutes. In the meantime, you can have a short break for, yeah, or for a few minutes yeah. while we change over. Thank you, Tejas. So yeah, after five minutes break, all of us shall uh, resume with our uh, orientation session for GDSC and Edward. Thank you. Okay, so we are conclude our session. Thanks everyone for giving your precious time and joining. Hope this session was insightful and you're all, uh, and you all are really excited to be a part of our club. So we will see you soon in the uh, induction. Till then, uh, you can take rest and then join for GDSC.